Okay, so this is the final demo for Google Sites. And this is about a project progress report as mentioned in the end of the last demo. This is not going to be anything related to a project management actually. It's just to track the progress of the project, track the issues and risks that are encountered across the project execution. Also to list the project contacts from both sides, the implementer and the customer, or in our case, us, the partner and the customer and also to track the progress of the users to find out how many users were migrated and how many of them are ready to the switch to Google Workspace and all of this. So for this, I actually have prepared three sheets, three Google Sheets that I'm going to use for this project. The first Google Sheet is just a basic task list. This is not anywhere near what we actually get when we get a Google Workspace migration project. But this is just a sample or a demo just to give you a little bit or to, to, to give you the feeling about what, what happens in a Google Workspace migration project. The second sheet is the actual user migration details and the migration tracking. So we've got the username, the domain, the source mailbox size in MBs, the data migration status, yes or no, the data validation status, did it pass or are there any missing items? And the action to be taken according to the data validation or the data migration. And finally, the check if this user is ready to switch to Google Workspace or not. And finally, the risks and issues log. And this, as you can see, it's empty because we start with an empty log. <laughs> and that's not something we want to get it filled, <laughs> actually. The more this is empty, the happier we are. But anyways, eventually this will get filled with some items, some stuff that will be added to this and people will complain about issues and all of that. So this is something also that I want to add and show in the Google site. So these are the three sheets. And as mentioned, this is just a use case or an, a simulation for a project that or a standard project that we usually get with Google Workspace. So in this, just to give you an idea on what we are expecting and what you should expect in here, there are multiple domains in here. There are, I think, five domains, actually seven domains. So this is an organization that have multiple domains. They can be brands or they can be divisions or whatever, but the end is this organization is having multiple email enabled domains. In this case, there are seven domains. We've got projects for people who had actually much more than the seven domains. In one case, I remember I had, I had worked with an organization with about 28 to 29 domains. Some other organization had less, but still like considerably some good number of domains, about 15 or 16. So all of these domains will be required to be migrated to Google Workspace and these will be added as secondary domains. In here, it doesn't matter what is the primary domain because at the end we're tracking the actual user. So we have also the size of the mailbox and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is an Office 365 or Exchange environment because it's much easier to get this information from. You can still get the information for other platforms, but again, I'm just assuming the easier here. And these are start, well, everything will start as no, as we can see in, or actually not started, as you can see in this one. So everything will start with not started, and then the data validation will be no, and the migration status is no, and all of that. So this is what we start the project with and then with the progress of the project the data will change and this will be as started or finished or it's in progress or finished or yes for finished then the data validation will change from no to pass or failed then the actions will actually say to migrate data or remigrate or none if the validation is done and the last step will mark the user to be ready as yes for the switch to Google Workspace. Then he will go into our change management process that we implement also for the customer to train the users into Google Workspace. 
So this is the data sheet that I'm going to use. And this is a very, a very small and a very tiny sample actually of what we might get and what you might expect if you're working or if you're getting into a migration project. So my goal here is to create a Google site and add all of these three sheets into the Google site and also add some additional information such as charts and the contact information for the parties in this project and finally share the project to specific people only outside of the organization who should access the project and all of this. So these sheets I will share with you so you can practice them. You can test them also on your own, but you can actually build your own templates, your own sheets and your own samples and use them if you wanted to have something different. So I will go to sites to google.com now and I will create the dashboard which is going to include an introduction about this project and the contacts for this project then add a few pages for the rest of these sheets. Again I'm starting with a blank site. Then I will name the site as project x dashboard. I don't have any more creative name so <laughs> So this is project X dashboard and I will actually start here with the project info and contacts. What I want to do here is I want to add some information about this project. What is the target of this project and what is the scope of this project very quickly and very briefly. So I'll go to insert. I'll insert a text box and I will, I will set this as a header first of all. So I will go to the background and say emphasis to, oh, I think this is the only different color that I have from the rest of the page here, but anyways. So project, I cannot type, project summary. This is going to be a heading. And then under that, I will add another text box that is going to be a description for the project. Okay, so I've done some summary on this. Then I will add another section that is going to be called the project contacts. So project contacts and this time I will use the layouts in here. I will add a layout. You can add an image for if you want to make it more friendly. <laughs> you can add an image for a user. So this is the contact page or the project contacts. So this is the landing page for the project. I need to create another page now to set the activities list and the action items for this project. So I will add a new page that is called activity list. And in the activity list, I will add the Google sheet that I have prepared for this project. So let me go to insert, add a text box and set it as a header. Then list, just to add a context to this go to sheets this time so adding a sheet then the main sheet which is this one i will click on it and then i will add the activities list now you can actually change some settings in this which is selecting what sheet is displayed or what is the main sheet but i only have once one sub sheet in here so i don't have to worry about this if you are sharing a sheet with multiple subsheets, then you can actually change that and display the subsheet that you want. So this is the activities list. There is nothing to this actually. So we can move into the third page, which is going to be the tracking for the users. This is the sheet. Now you will notice the charts will come in here as well, which is fine. I will add the charts at the bottom or probably add the charts on top of this table okay. then go to charts I will select the sheet that I have selected just now then it will show me the available charts in that I will select all of the charts okay the charts are done so now this is the tracking report for the users the final page that I want to, or actually the one before final, because I still want to add one more page. The one before final is the risks logs. So risks and issues. This is where I will add the header again here. 
Then I will add the sheet again for the issues and the risks tracking. So going to sheets and I will add the risks and issues tracking sheet. This is going to be a long sheet. So I will just do a little resizing for this. That's it. So this is the main content that I want to add here. Now I just want to add one more sheet to serve as let's say resources or downloads or something. We can create a specific document library for this project. So for this I'll have to go to drive.google.com. In shared drives, I can actually create a folder or a shared drive, a new one that is called projects for example. And in this projects, I can create a folder with the customer name or the project name. And inside it, I can save all of the files and all of the documents that are related to this customer and this project into this folder. So I will just share this folder to people and I will actually do it for anyone with the link. And you might see the new icon here or the new tag because previously in the shared drives, you were not able to share folders to people or you actually were unable to share any folder using shared drives. You were just able to share files and a whole, a complete shared drive, you, can, you could just share that to specific people. Now they added the option to share individual folders to specific people or with other people in Google Drive. So this is something very nice and it has been a very critical feature that was missing from this, but luckily for us now it's there. So I'll click share, I will set it anyone with the link and that's going to be external can view the folder. This is the link. I don't actually need to copy the link. I just go here and go to pages and then add another page, which is now I will name it documents and resources. And in this, I will add the shared drive that I have created. So my Google site to track the progress of a project is ready. Once there is any content in this folder, it, they will actually show up in here. That is the reason why it's showing a white box or something. Let me actually add a sheet or something. So now when I go back to the folder, I should see some stuff in here. I might need to refresh a little, but when I go to review, you should see the item came in here now and this is the content that I want. So this is the basic setup of the site. Again, you can take it, expand on it. You can change it to make it more friendly for more people or to integrate it with the internal portal that I have created where you can create a page to list all of the ongoing project and each project has the link to its Google site where you can track all of these centrally. Now, what's left is again to share this project or this Google site with the specific people who need to access that and then setting a custom URL if you want. And then that will be it for the demo and for the whole Google sites section in this course. So I'll go to publish. And now I don't want to share it internally only. I want specific people to access this. So I'll go to manage and then I will type the email addresses of the people that I want to share with. So for example, let me actually share it with my other ID and I can set the access level for this user or for this person with either an editor access or published viewer access only. Now, considering this is going to be the customer, I want to give him the viewer role only where he will just log into the site or he will just go to the site and view the content inside it. So I'll click share and then I will click share anyway for that notification it, that I'm sharing outside of the organization and then that's it. So this is how you add external people or specific people to the site. You just go to manage in here and add the people that you want and then click publish. Now, after you publish, you can actually add more people to the site by going to the sharing button or share with others. So when you click this, it will show you the usual sharing box where you can type the email address and then assigning the actual permission, the access level and all of this. So now I just need to show you the site as it looks like when people open that. Let me go to the home and then copy the URL again. 
and then open that in a new tab so this is how the project or the project site will look like again you can do more creative stuff than me <laughs> I'm just like showing this for a demonstration and just to prove the point here but this is the landing page an overview of the project and then the contacts you can then get to the activities list this is where it will start showing you actual sheets and actual content then you go to users progress tracking where you can see the full visibility on the sheet and on the user's progress these are the charts and if you scroll down a little bit you can see the actual sheet in here then you go to documents and resources and you'll find the document library where the shared drive is actually hosting all of the files and everything is found in a central location and then finally we have the risks and issues this is where you actually track the risks if there are any as mentioned we would love to see this empty all of the time however when it's it's when it's empty or when it's filled we have to take action on the logged items in here and we have to make sure that we fix all of the issues so now i will go to the admin console again go to apps you know the drill now you go to apps then google workspace and then sites then custom url so you, you just do the same standard steps to add the custom url for this site so and, and you can do the mapping for example based on the project name so you can say that project x dot the domain name dot com so the customer and you will know what to type in order to open the project tracking sheet and that will only be accessible to them and you even if it is published on a public domain name you can still control who can access this and so on so this is it for the google sites and this is it for the last demo hopefully this was useful hopefully this gave you some information and some insights on what you can do and what are the ways where you can let users do more and use the various services and applications in google workspace i will share the resources for the last demo for you so that you can use them and again they probably they'll give you some insights so that you can expand on them or make them a core for something else it's really flexible and you can do it the way you want next i'll be talking about the email flow controls how you can control the email flow and what are the options for you what are the available routing rules and content compliance rules and all of these this is a very interesting topic and very advanced topic as well you must be aware about this and you must know how to work with these controls these are very critical, you need to be aware about them all of the time.